Jake Ludington here at HP's Global Partner Conference in Las Vegas, and I'm here with Eric Holton. And earlier you showed me the Sentinel demo, right. which is probably what I have seen to be the most practical application of software-defined networking that's out in the market today. Maybe, the, maybe it's the only one that's a, a shipping solution. I agree completely, yeah. Uh, and if you could kind of talk through how that fits into BYOD and, and also how the solution provides um, a greater level of security in an environment where you kind of have uh, a, a lot less control over what kind of devices are arriving on the network. Right. So with, with our BYOD solutions, um, we don't have any control over the devices that are coming onto the network. We don't know what state they're in, we don't know if, if they're hosting malware or anything like that. So we've developed a solution called Sentinel that's a software-defined networking solution that helps mitigate that risk. And what we're doing is we're taking security and pushing it to the edge of the network using the OpenFlow protocol. So it's a really exciting SDN solution. It's a real world app. It, it exists today and it's aimed at the campus LAN. So it's, it's really exciting. And the way that this works, we'll look at, at a diagram here. Up here at the top, we've got a tipping point IPS that contains a rep DV. It's, it's developed by the, the tipping point DV labs and it contains today just under a million entries of hosts that are known to, to contain malware. So what we want to do is we want to stop uh, those clients from contacting that server. So imagine the situation where your, your iPhone has a, a piece of malware on it that's trying to contact a botnet server. How do we stop that? Well, we're going to use this solution to stop that traffic. And the way we do that is we're going to take all of the traffic that, comes, that accesses the, the network and we're going to forward it to an OpenFlow controller where we're going to compare it to that DV Labs database and, and determine if it's, if it's a safe site or not. If it's not a safe site, if, it's a, if we're trying to access some site that's known to host malware, we're just going to drop the traffic right here at the edge of the network. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual demo. So this is the Sentinel interface itself. At the top, we've got a summary of the traffic that is getting forwarded on the network, or that has been forwarded by Sentinel. If we scroll down a little bit, we see the different threat types that are defined within that rep DV, as well as a score level. And what we have the ability here is to define what level of uh, traffic we're comfortable with blocking. And then, you know, additional functionality, we have the ability to, to add custom white or blacklist entries. So for traffic that we always want to permit or always want to block, we can do that as well. Okay? So what happens here is that controller, when it boots up, it installs several flows onto the switch. The three, there are three flows by default. One of them is going to forward all IP traffic up to the controller for analysis. The other is going to take your non-IP traffic. The stuff we, you know, that we really don't need to compare it against the rep DV because it's not IP traffic, we're just going to forward that normally. So if you have Apple Talk running on your network, it will still get forwarded normally. And then the last flow is going to take all your DNS traffic and forward that again to the controller for analysis. So we want to validate every DNS request against the rep DV. And then every new uh, IP request is going to get validated against that rep DV as well. Once uh, it has been validated that it's safe, Sentinel is going to push a flow down to the switch that says, uh, go ahead and permit this traffic and switch it normally. So that's, and it's doing that on a dynamic basis. So we're dynamically using the OpenFlow protocol to reconfigure the switches on your network to forward good traffic. If we want to take a look at this in action, uh, it's, it's simple as, as doing, if I do an NS lookup, I, I get a response very quickly that that is a non-existent domain. And while that you know, may not look exciting in the first place, that's actually Sentinel that's doing that. It's intercepting that DNS request, it's, and it's responding with a non-existent domain response. What that does is it stops the client from even attempting to continue to resolve that name or waiting for it to time out several times over. So it immediately just gets a response, non-existent domain. Um, another example might be if I... Uh, try to ping an address that, is, that I know exists in the database. And I can show you that database if you'd like to see it. The, the, the example is not exciting. All we're seeing is a, is a ping timeout. And that's because we're just dropping that traffic at the controller. If I go back here to Sentinel, we can see there's that DNS request we, we did. Um, and actually, I guess I, I need to refresh this because it logged me out. So there's there's that DNS request I did at 4.05. We can see that matches the clock. 
and again that IP address at 406. So we can see that it's logged that there. The, the uh, additional functionality that we've got is we also integrate with another HP technology company called ArcSight. And we're going to take all of those log messages for those block sites and forward it to ArcSight for further correlation so that we can take log messages from throughout the network and correlate it and raise flags that wouldn't necessarily get raised if you were just looking at a single log file. And then if we want to take a look at the switch itself, we can take a look at those flows. So by default, the configuration of the switch is very simple. All I have defined is um, I've told it that VLAN 2 is going to be an open flow VLAN and that it, and that it can reach its controller on that IP address and the only other configuration on the switch is to actually add VLAN 2. So that is the entire configuration. It, may, it really simplifies the configuration of your switch because we're abstracting that configuration and moving it to the controller. The other thing I want to show you is the open flow flows. So here we can see that we've got nine flows that have been configured on that switch. Three of those are the default and the other six are for, for uh, destinations that we have already validated are safe. So that's what we've got there and, if, and we could go through and look at those flows if you wanted. But that's the Sentinel security solution. Today, it's, it's the only um, real-world application that is aimed at the campus LAN. And, and many might even argue it's the only real-world SDN application that exists and is available today. All right, so I know, it, you know you touched on this a little bit, but what is the end user experience for if, say, I try to visit that Pirates Must Die site either on my iPhone connected to the network or on my desktop or, or any other device? Uh, the browser's just going to return a page cannot be found. So it's just be simple, that simple today. And is that something that, that over time maybe we could see custom error messages that would say? That's, that's something we've asked the, the R&D group to actually deliver, is instead of just you know, dropping that traffic, redirect them to a web page that says, hey, you, you've attempted to access a site that's, that, is, uh, that is prohibited or has been, you know, is known to host malware. Um, and I don't know what that's going to look like. You can imagine a situation where you've got several panes on a web page and only one part of it contains that you know content that's not that's not safe. I don't know what that would look like, but yeah, that's something that we've asked R and D to look into. And then in terms of a, an implementation side of things, is this something that requires you to have a Tipping Point appliance, or is there a virtualized version of Tipping Point that, that is bundled with the Sentinel application? Right. So today, uh, the, the Sentinel application downloads its RepDV from an SMS installation. Uh, in the future, uh, we we, we intend to have Sentinel be able to download that RepDV directly from the cloud. That's the intent. Now, I would argue that this is only part of a multi-layers of security you need on your network, and that you know, for, for true security, you still want to have an IPS at the core of your network to do that additional protection. So uh, I, this is not replacing the tipping point IPS.